Is time-restricted feeding optimal for body composition? In recent years, there has been a growing trend for people to squish their entire daily food intake into a tiny little window. Rather than eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner at whatever time you fucking want, proponents might try and convince you that if you want to lose fat, you need to consume all of your food in a small window, like eight hours. People use different terms for intermittent fasting protocols, but a daily structure like this is normally referred to as time-restricted feeding, or TRF. I'm going to be straight with you. When any dietary approach gathers momentum, there tends to be a hardcore subset of their following, which basically turns into a cult. And if you say anything disparaging about that diet, that cult swiftly misplace their excrement. But to discuss the positives of time-restricted feeding, we do also have to discuss the negatives. So first and foremost, let's just rip the band-aid off. Anyone that tells you you need to eat all of your food in a narrow window is talking absolute horseshit. Prior to everyone getting aroused by the idea that skipping breakfast might suddenly speed up fat loss, narrow feeding windows were already extremely popular, mainly for religious reasons. In the Islamic practice of Ramadan, Muslims would abstain from eating or drinking anything from sunrise to sunset, and research papers claim that depending on where they are in the world, this time span can range from 9 to 22 hours per day. Now, although this is a religious non-weight loss seeking practice, it actually gives us some really insightful data for two reasons. Unlike a lot of weight loss trials which have a small number of participants, the Muslim population of our planet is in the billions. It also shows us what happens when people follow time-restricted feeding without necessarily implementing any other dietary restrictions, like having a specific calorie intake goal. Quite a lot of research papers have looked at what happens to body composition during Ramadan, and unsurprisingly, there is a wide range of effects, ranging from weight loss, obviously, to actual weight gain, which serves as accidentally strong evidence that time-restricted feeding won't magically melt body fat off you. It is very possible that someone abstaining from food for a large chunk of the day gets super fucking hungry and wants to chew their own arm off, so when their feeding window arrives, they compensate by eating more food. But, on average, people do tend to lose weight. Which means without any other dietary recommendations, time-restricted feeding is a powerful enough prescription that it can nudge people towards consuming fewer calories. So now we have the foundational hypothesis. Let's move on to the next step. Although there had been some promising data in animals, of course we needed some human research that tested reduced meal frequency, hence this study in 2007. It was a pretty simple design. Participants consumed their daily calorie requirements either as one meal per day or three meals per day. And at the time, this wasn't even referred to as time-restricted feeding, it was just referred to as meal skipping. Although they were supposed to consume enough calories to maintain their body weight, when participants ate one meal a day, they actually lost a bit of weight and a bit of body fat, kind of accidentally. But at the risk of getting unnecessarily nerdy, it is dangerous to let one study seal the deal. It was a very small study, and body composition measurements were taken via bioelectrical impedance analysis, which can be about as accurate as blindfolding a monkey and letting it play darts. Whichever way you slice it though, it is at least a cautious win for time-restricted feeding. Before we get too excited though, let's look at a later study which examined breakfast skipping, where subjects were only allowed to consume food after midday, but this time, the study used extra fancy equipment, allowing us to look at stuff we haven't looked at before. When participants skipped breakfast, they naturally consumed fewer calories, as you can see in the bar on the right. And we know that consuming fewer calories will result in more weight loss, right? Wrong. Most research papers don't include the same detailed analysis that this one did, and it was shown that when participants skipped breakfast, they also burned fewer calories per day. Not because fasting fucked up their resting metabolism or anything like that, it was simply a case that skipping breakfast resulted in people moving around less. Which is a perfect example of why cutting your calories more so doesn't always result in proportional weight loss. These studies are just a cheeky little snippet of why trusting one research paper can be dangerous. Think of research papers a little bit like baking a cake. Once you feel confident that you can make the foundation sponge, you can get progressively experimental with the fancy icing. So in this case of studying time-restricted feeding, what happens if you add resistance training? Or what happens if you change the length of the feeding window, like four hours instead of eight hours? Or what happens if you move the feeding window to the morning instead of the evening? As soon as you change the type of cake that you're making, you can't directly compare them anymore. So let me give you some examples. The first time-restricted feeding study that incorporated resistance training was 
was in men. The feeding window was only four hours long on non-training days only, and there were no recommendations given for calorie intake or protein intake. So as no nutritional recommendations were given, you can't exactly tell whether squashing your entire day's food intake into a small four hour window is inherently better for body composition. But what it could tell us is when you give people only a four hour window to eat on non-training days, they will probably consume less food. And they may struggle to build as much lean body mass. But that might just be because they ate fewer calories and less protein, not necessarily that they were only eating in a four hour window. One later study also incorporated resistance training, but it was in female, not male subjects. There was an eight hour feeding window, not a four hour feeding window. That feeding window was every day, not just on non-training days. And they were given an additional protein supplementation, whereas they weren't. And in this instance, Time-restricted feeding wasn't worse for lean body mass preservation, whereas it was before. So although the results on paper might look like they argue with each other, we're actually looking at two kind of different cakes. So at this point, here are the big questions we want the answers to. Does time-restricted feeding result in more fat loss? Often, yes, but at least largely just because people consume less food. Are you more likely to lose muscle tissue? Possibly, yes, but also for the same reason. If people consume less food, they may also consume less protein, which is worse for holding on to lean body mass. So what happens if you compare two groups? One follows a time-restricted feeding plan, the other doesn't, but they both follow the same resistance training plan, they both consume the same number of calories, and they both consume the same amount of protein. Well, if we look at the two most detailed studies we have answering that question, one of them suggests that time-restricted feeding might result in more fat loss, but the other one showed no significant differences when it came to fat loss, lean body mass preservation, gym performance, or resting metabolic rate. So here lies the problem. A lot of people have surprisingly steadfast views when it comes to time-restricted feeding, ranging from the hardcore fans that act like it opens some kind of magical fat loss portal to other people who claim that there's no fucking point. And it kind of makes sense because there are a lot of people who read the odd research paper but then seem disconcertingly confident that they understand the research well. But if you are blindfolded and you put your hand into a bag of balls and you pull out a red one, it would be a mistake to assume that all the other balls in the bag are red. Because when it comes to time-restricted feeding studies, they are not all the same. There's a really fucking diverse range of protocols. This is why it's important to look at all of the research papers together. Take all of the balls out of the bag instead of pulling out just one and assuming that the others look the same. So let's look at meta-analyses, which pull lots of studies together to try and come up with overarching conclusions. And this is the type of thing we'll see. As it has some overlap with time-restricted feeding, this meta-analysis of 30 13 studies looked at breakfast intake and concluded that people who skip breakfast often lose a little bit of weight primarily because they just tend to eat less. This review paper looked at 11 papers and again concluded that time-restricted feeding tended to make people consume similar or fewer calories than a normal diet, which prompted the kind of underwhelming conclusion that we need more high quality research, but for the interim, we know that time-restricted feeding often results in weight loss probably because people eat less. Although there's a lot of hype around time-restricted feeding at the moment, the research is too mixed to get super fucking excited. So next time someone tries to tell you that 16-8 is some kind of miraculous weight loss diet and calories don't matter at all, you can be pretty confident in knowing they haven't read all the research. Follow a time-restricted feeding plan if you want. A lot of people love them, but it's probably not worth getting it tattooed across your chest.